Hey guys, J Stu Productions here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys a real basic intro to Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Now this is just uh, a new project opened up here. Um, up here in the browser is where you're going to have all of your video, your audio, anything that you want to put in your project. Now you might be looking at this saying this looks a little weird. Mine doesn't look like that. Yours might look more like this. Just kind of cluttered, random stuff in here. Now the reason that mine looks different is because I have created bins for each one of these items. Now before I get into the bins, I guess I should probably tell you how to import these things in here in the first place if you don't know. It's pretty simple. You go up to File, go down to Import, and you can import files or folders. And this includes music, video, any pictures. Here's my music. You can bring in photos, and you can bring in movies. So you just Select those and then it brings it right in. Here. Okay, these are in bins and you can create a bin by right clicking and then just selecting new bin. And you can rename it, whatever you want, and then you can just, it's just a way to organize everything, keep everything together. Um, so I'm gonna undo that. The shortcut for undo is Apple or Command, Command Z, get rid of that. So I'm gonna start by opening up my video bin and uh, I'm just gonna click and drag down a video into here. Now this is really long so I'm just gonna cut this down a little bit and I'm gonna just do that by um, selecting a spot on the timeline in the video and I'm gonna use the razor blade tool. Now the easiest way to get the razor blade tool is to hit the B key on your keyboard that brings up the razor blade. Now you can also hit B twice you have a double razor blade. I'll show you what that is later but I'm just gonna go ahead and B again and do the razor blade and just basically what that does is that splits the clip right there now if you've got the razor blade and you want to get back to your normal cursor just hit the A key and you'll get back to that so once you've figured out how to split your clips you can say okay split it there and I want to split it right here split that hit the A key to get back and then I can select this clip and delete now Another thing, if I want to join these two clips together, I know there are lots of ways to do this, but there's one main way that I do. Right now, if I go to join this clip together, it's really tough to get it perfectly set where you want it. You want it to join right up there, and you don't want it to overlap, but it's kind of hard. So what you can do is come over here, and this is called snapping. Just click on the snapping button. And now it's going to actually snap into place when it gets close enough. So I get it close, and then boom, it snaps right on there. And that is really handy. It'll snap onto the end of any clip you have, um, anywhere on the, on the timeline. This also works for um, the razor tool. If I want to cut something right here, um, and I hit the razor tool, the razor blade snaps to that spot. And it just makes for much more accurate, um, accurate cutting and stuff like that. So now I've got this down here, and let's say I'm going to add a, I want to add a, a picture into it. So I'm going to click and drag this picture. I'm going to add it to the video track two, right there. Now anything, anything that is on a, if you have multi video tracks on here whichever is higher up on the on your on your timeline is going to be what you're going to see so right now you don't see what's underneath that Mac so unless you were to swap these two if I were to swap this one now this one's above the Mac so you're going to see this and you're going to see the Mac and you're going to see the original so it's always a good thing to remember so once I've got this in here I can uh, if you double click on it, you're going to pull it up into your viewer up here. And you can click on the motions tab and you can adjust a lot of things. You can adjust the size of it. Um, you can adjust your, your the time. You can slow it down or speed it up with the, with the speed percentage right here. Um, you can change the opacity of it. Um, so you can sort of see what's going on behind it at the same time. There's a lot of different things in here that you can do and that's without any special effects at all now 
Okay, so before I get into special effects, I'm going to add some audio in here. Now, there's already regular audio, but I want to add some music. So I open up my audio bin, which I have one song in there, and there it is. Now, if you notice, there's a red line right up here, and that means that this audio track needs to be rendered. So I'm going to cut this down just because I don't need the entire song to show something being rendered. So how you render it, if, it, if it's not rendered, it's not going to play right. You're not going to most likely be able to see it at all. So I go up to Sequence, Render. I'm just going to do Render All, both video and audio, even though it's just audio that needs to be rendered, and it's gone. So now we can play through this, and you're going to hear the audio. Okay, so now the audio is in there. Now if I want to get rid of the original audio that came with the video, it's very simple. I'm just going to lock my video track down so the video track can't go anywhere. And now I have free reign to adjust. I'm sorry, I'm going to lock my video track. And now I have free reign to adjust my, my audio. I can get rid of it if I want to. And once again, if I get rid of it and I realize that, oh, I want that back, just Command Z, Command Z again, and it's back there. Okay, so once I got my music in there, maybe what I might want to do is um, add um, some effects. Now the effects are pretty nice. They're, they're pretty straightforward. These are all bins or folders that have the different kinds in them. Um, here's the color corrector, which is really popular. I use it a lot, at least. And you would just click and drag the color corrector down to the appropriate spot that you want it. Now once it's in there, you don't really see anything different yet. So you go down and double click on the clip that you just dragged it into. Go up here to the viewer and you'll see this little tab, color corrector. Now once you're in there, you can adjust your the various different blacks and mids and whites and saturation and get it to a color that you want. It's but it gets the job done if you're doing some minor stuff. Um, okay, and the last thing I'm going to talk about really quick, I believe, is video transitions. Now, there's a lot, like again, like the effects, there's a lot of different transitions that'll do a lot of different things. I mainly stick with dissolves. I'll use a fade in and out dissolve in the beginning, and I'll use one in the end, so it's, it's kind of fades in and out. And then throughout the, the project, I'll use like a cross dissolve right here. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, now, I can double click on the dissolve itself, and that again gets pulled up into the viewer. Now up here I can change the duration of the, the, bleh, of the dissolve. Right now it's at only one second long. I can change that to, let's say, five seconds. And there, now you're gonna see the dissolve is much more gradual. So what that's gonna end up looking like is, and you can add dissolves and you can add fade in and outs to music. You can add them to anything. The ends of clips, you can add them to whatever you want. I, I go kind of crazy with my dissolves. I add them all over the place. It just makes everything kind of s flow a little bit smoother to me. Um, especially the music. I, I add fade-ins and fade-outs, and you can do that in audio transitions as well. All right, so let's say you're, you're done here and you're, you got your video the way you like it. Um, one good way of, uh, I'm going to tackle this really quick, one good way of playing your, your video, the easy way, is just hit the space bar. And that will play and then that will stop your, your video. Now your arrow keys are also very important. Your arrow keys, if you'll see, I'll, I'll zoom in here. If you hit the left arrow key, your video is going to advance backwards at one frame at a time. And obviously, if I hit the right arrow key, it's going to go forward. This is really good to get precise um, timing and everything down. And then the up arrow key is going to jump all the way to the back to the beginning. The down arrow key is going to move forward one like clip at a time basically as you see that which is really nice it's a good way to get to exact locations easy so the arrow keys are very important the space bar is very handy snapping is, is very nice the razor blade tool is very important 
And uh, hopefully this helps, and I will try and tackle some more things uh, very soon.